This is going to be an updated review of Game Guru Max as of August 2023. Now, about a, just over a year ago, I did a review on Game Guru Max back when it first came out in early access. It was only a few months after early access and it was still in its infancy. And there's still a lot of bugs, still a lot of features that we're missing that we just don't see today as we do today. Um, now that it's been updated now that new features have been added I feel like this is going to be a very quick review and the way I've got this review set up is I did a I'm going to review a small project that I'm currently working on and show you some of the key features that I think are good selling points for Game Guru Max but I'm also going to talk about some of its drawbacks and some of its limiting factors now as of August 2023 the price for it is still $49.99 which was pretty much the same price as it was just over a year ago so that doesn't hasn't changed much but what has changed is Game Guru Max uh, the game creators have released a lot of new content for it, a lot of new, new DLC packs things what they call uh, booster packs as well as game kits which basically adds a lot of new content to your game that has a specific theme in mind gives audio to your game, gives weapons to your games, uh, particles, things of that nature. Now I want people to understand that this is a completely opinion based after using the software for several hours and what I think are the good key features uh, as well as what might not be good selling points for it. One of the best features I do like about Game Guru Max over its predecessor Game Guru Classic, I mean its former product is this game storyboard. Now Game Guru Classic simply didn't have this. You had to go in manually to change your menu and even then it was pretty limited. Game Guru Max got rid of all those limiting factors by giving you the ability to edit your title screen, loading screen, your save game screen, even your splash screen and you can even add new features to your title screen. For example you can add things like a codex um, selection or like maybe you want to add lore to your game, maybe you want to add settings to your main menu, you know, things of that nature. Now, also the cool thing about it is you can edit things on there like the buttons, you can edit the uh, text, the fonts, um, you can even add your own images on top of your background. You can also change the music track, you can uh, change, you know, positions of items that you've put on the menu. Changing your background is as simple as uh, selecting a button, going to your own imports, or they, they've also have their own backgrounds in here already uh, preloaded into the software. A lot of different things that you can add and uh, use that's already in the software without you having to go in there and buy your own or make a custom. I will say the software is very user friendly uh, for the most part when it comes to the storyboard. Uh, simply because this uh, product is aimed towards beginners, people who don't know how to code or don't want to learn how to code, don't have time to code, simply don't care about doing all that themselves. Maybe you're an artist and you just want to focus mainly on making the art for the game. This is where Game Guru Max, I personally think, really shines. Now, another good feature about the overall product is the uh, level editor. It's like a lot of other editors of other game softwares. It's pretty much a drag and drop system in which you can drop your items into the map relatively quickly, get them moving around pretty quick. Now there are a couple times where moving an object in the map is might be a tad a pain. Um, the positioning system can sometimes be a pain, especially if you're dealing with flat meshes such as these ceilings right here. Uh, it can be a pain sometimes to move those items. Now overall for the most part though, it's pretty still easy to use uh, to move things. They also have pretty cool features. You can add particles into your maps that are already pre-built into the system. They have lights. You can change them on the fly. Uh, pretty relatively quickly you can change the color palette, uh, the intensity of the light, things of that nature. Um, you can even change the behavior of the lights, like if it flickers, glows kind of like a flame. Uh, strobe lights, shirt lights, they give a little short description too of uh, what they do that way you're not too lost on it. Now one of the features I do really like over Game Guru Classic into this system is just how easy it is to add your own custom objects or 
assets that you've purchased into the system over Game Gear Classic. In this one, it has more support features uh, for more different types of models. It makes it much more simpler and cleans it up of the process over Game Gear Classic. You simply hit Import 3D Model. Uh, you select the model that you have. You import the model pretty quickly. Uh, the textures, everything, uh, if everything is set already correctly into the folder that you imported from, it should be a pretty quick and easy import. Now, occasionally you will have issues. Uh, for example, in this scene, the scale is pretty big, but I like the feature how to give you a character right here to see just how big that object will be in game. Of course, you're still going to have to go in there. Sometimes you will have to edit the material types of things that import correctly. But overall, it's much more cleaner, much more simpler, much more fleshed out than Game Group Classic was. And once you import, you simply hit Add to Object Library, and there it is. And then you can start adding it to your map. Now, obviously, this chair is much too big, but you can set the scale. You can set the uh, collision mesh, um, the collision around the mesh. It's a... Uh, pretty much simple straightforward um, and then obviously you can set behaviors and um, the overall features of that object that you added. You also have over here what's called game elements. Basically this is its own form of scripting and programming where you just drag and drop something onto the ground and it has an effect whether when your player gets to it or uh, during the start of a game what have you. You can use trigger zones that run certain scripts. You, it already has pre-built uh, scripts like win game, um, checkpoints, uh, the player start position. You can play a video when entering a certain radius, just such as right here. You can play audio. You put an audio and uh, when a player steps within this radius, it'll play a certain sound. Maybe it'll start music. It really is a process of simplifying and um, making it as easy as possible for a user to get up and running and starting a project rather than worrying about having to do all of the programming and scripting themselves and getting things to work uh, and run smoothly. Now even with a lower end PC, this uh, PC is only running a GTX 1650. 32 gigabytes of RAM with the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. The graphics fidelity is definitely improved over Classic. Now, I know that this project is a really cartoon stylized graphics, but even then the fidelity, the overall smoothness and the crispness of it is definitely improved over Classic. Now, that's not to say it doesn't have some of its own drawbacks, and there are some people that even say they don't like the way GameGuru Max's graphic systems look. I personally think that it looks a lot better than its predecessor. It uses a rendering engine known as the Wicked Engine, I believe, is what their graphic system runs off of. The speed at which you're able to just jump right into your project and test it too is pretty quick, and I really like that about this uh, system. You can instantaneously jump in, even with the lower end PC. It's pretty quick to jump right in your project and test all of your edits. Hello Willow. I am Lady Red, the hostess here at Hollow Croft. I know things might not make much sense right now, but soon they will. Countess Spook will want to see you. Go meet her at the Grand Chamber. Now, in my previous review, I kind of already showed the terrain generator, so I won't get too much into that. But basically, it lets you uh, select your, ter uh, your different types of terrains from plains, canyon, mountains. It lets you edit the size of your map. You can have some pretty large maps here. Uh, let you add, you know, the uh, depth of the water in the map, how deep, uh, where it starts, where it ends. It's a pretty cool system. If you do buy it, you will just really have to test all of it yourself uh, to see all the features of that. I've kind of already spoken into this already a lot, so I'm not going to get too much into detail. But it's a pretty cool procedural generated uh, terrain generator, and this is where basically all your maps start off as. They even give you an empty terrain Maybe you just want an indoor map, and this would be a good uh, selection for that. Some new features that I have noticed uh, from the last review is, for example, you could restore the screen. Maybe you make a mistake on, say, your lower game screen. You will restore it back to the defaults. You go back in, and everything's restored back to the system defaults. That way you can go back and make your edits. Some other features is here when you go into a trigger spot, when you've created a trigger zone you can change the behavior right here there's a lot of 
different uh, behaviors that you can add to the trigger zone uh, from RPG selections, HUDs, where if you want to turn your HUD on and off, effects, uh, some horror elements if you're making a horror game. This is going to be particularly useful in the horror game. Like I said, RPG elements, my personal favorite. This will really help flesh out your game and add core features and content to your game that you won't have to go in there and do some complex programming yourself. Now that's not to say that this engine doesn't have some drawbacks, however. Even after using the engine for nearly 100 hours, there's always an idea or something I want to achieve that Max isn't able to achieve or yet hasn't been able to achieve as of right now, maybe it'll be added later on. You're going to be running into things that are going to really limit you, especially if you're making more complex projects such as RPG projects or projects with really complicated dialogue and that's where you have to get pretty creative in order to make your project work properly. And despite it looking better than classic, its former engine, despite it performing better, despite it having more features, it still feels pretty limited as of right now. Now of course they're going to be adding new features to the engine. You still have good features uh, that are already pre-built as I've showed you, plus some right here like your environment effects. You can customize the sky, the weather, things like that, which is all pretty good. But to me, it, that's more of just standard fare that should already be pre-built into the engine. Another limiting feature I find a little bit annoying, but I'm sure it might be able to overcome this later on, is it's mainly a first-person engine. That's what it's built for. It's definitely for first-person games. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with making a first-person game. They're one of the most popular game genres, and you can do all sorts of different ideas with a first-person game project. But that was a huge problem with Game Guru Classic was its inability to make third-person games. Well, simply to make third-person games. You still could have done it, and people did some pre pretty creative ideas with the first person system they still were able to manage third person games and uh, even other types of games outside of first and third person. Now of course I would like to see more third person elements to make a third person game but right now GameGuru Max at this time still seems pretty more heavily first person oriented and I don't think GameGuru Max is ever really going to completely sway from that. It's definitely an FPS engine, and that's what the game creators have always been good at, is making FPS-style game engines. You will also run into bugs, standard things like that. Plenty of bugs are still in the engine, so they are being worked out and they are being fleshed out. So you have to be patient about some things. Sometimes you'll get crashes. Uh, sometimes just random things will mess up, and you'll have to go back and edit it. It's kind of complicated to get too in-depth with that, because there are so many different uh, situations that might occur on your end, whereas it might not occur on my end, simply because the software is not completely finished. So, who is this engine for? It's definitely, if you're thinking you're going to make the next Call of Duty, if you're thinking you're going to make the next biggest RPG, that is simply not the case with this engine. That is not what the engine was uh, tailored towards, it never has been, and it probably never will be. This engine is a simple editor with great features and to me it is definitely achieving what it was intended to do a simple easy to use game engine where it's non programmers and even non artists are able to pick up and use it without too much trouble that to me has finally been achieved with the game guru max and it seems like that's what the game creators have been doing for years now is trying to achieve something on that level like I said though, you're still going to have issues with it and you can create a pretty good quality product that you could probably sell in the shops or on Steam or somewhere else on another website. You could put in the necessary work to sell a good product, but if you're thinking of making a big major game, 
Maybe you're a hardcore programmer, maybe you're a really hardcore artist, maybe you've even gone to school for game design and you're just looking for a simple engine. This engine can definitely get you up to speed and make some great projects, but if you're looking to make a big project, I think you'd be better off with other engines such as Unity or Unreal. Now personally for me, I've put in thousands of hours into Unreal Engine and to me this is more of a hobbyist engine that I enjoy to flesh out my ideas as well as get projects out really quickly because in the bigger engines you got to put a lot more work and when you just want to make a game that's fun quick and you can get it up to running this engine is definitely great for that I really like Game Guru Max I think it's great it's kind of a bit of a more hobbyist engine I'll admit uh, but at the same time there's that quality there where you could make decent projects, you could make decent games. Now, some people might say you can never make a really good quality game on here, which it could sell a lot, but I somewhat disagree with that. If enough work is put into it, you could make a decent project that you could, say, sell on Steam. Now, you're probably not going to be the next big, greatest, triple, I mean, double A indie category game maker but who knows you might have some success even there were a few titles on game guru classic were a pretty relatively good success so there's that now on a final note i do want to talk about artificial intelligence in this engine and it's kind of a hit or miss with this you're definitely not going to get triple a quality artificial intelligence in this uh, engine but that's not to say that there can't be good quality artificial intelligence it's definitely been improved from classic but that's still not saying too much. You can have good artificial intelligence and the base artificial intelligence has definitely been improved. It's definitely playable, it's definitely usable and you'll have what you need to get a basic decent game up and running. And you can change the, as you could see here, the behavior of that artificial intelligence, um, the features that you're really gonna need to make the enemies or if it's a neutral character maybe it's a shop a character that you know sells you items in the game you'll have all those features there but at the same time you will kind of find yourself somewhat annoyed occasionally with the artificial intelligence that the engine has to offer now there are ways to tweak this there are ways to improve it but sometimes it just feels like you're kind of trying to hide it and shadow the AI but I will say it's usable, it's workable, but there will be occasional issues with it. And you should expect that um, with some of your projects. So don't be surprised when something doesn't work the way you want it to. Uh, but overall, it has a lot of improved art artificial intelligence. You can have allies, you can have neutral NPCs, enemy obviously NPCs, you can change their behaviors and those are all great features to have. For example, right here, your allegiance, ally, neutral, you can change the health, the speed in which they run, their view, view range. There's a lot of features that are built in that you will be allowed to use and I think that's great. And you should, if you do buy the engine, you'll have to play around with it to really see all of its features because it would just be a very long video if I told you everything. But overall, it does come out of the box. Everything you do need to make a pretty decent game with uh, pretty decent enemies and characters. So you shouldn't be too worried about it. But as I said, you're definitely not going to get that high AAA fidelity, but it is a hobbyist engine after all. There are other things I could talk about with the engine. There would be a lot more to cover, but I think the key features are there. Uh, do I recommend buying it? That really depends on your needs. Uh, if you like to make games quickly, and you want to get a story out quickly, you're not the type of person that wants to spend 300 hours modeling every single object in the game and replacing every single thing from the uh, starter kit, then this is probably not going to be the engine for you. If you're a hardcore programmer, definitely not going to be the engine for you. I would say if you're a hobbyist or maybe you want to try your hand out at selling a thing or two on Steam, I will caution you, you can use the engine for that, but you're going to have to put in the work. We all know how, well anyone who used to use Classic knows how notorious the Classic 
game guru engine was for really bad projects being released on steam and i hope this engine does not suffer the same fate although because of how simple it is to export these projects how simple it is to create characters and that it could definitely be abused by people once again just wanting to make a quick buck or they're just lazy and they don't want to put in the effort with this engine so if you're gonna buy this engine understand that you're still gonna put yourself at risk being labeled a wannabe game engine designer I hate the fact that this engine might happen just like it did with classic despite this engine being very superior to classic in my opinion just be aware that you do have those risks and if you do post your project on a website or a app like steam be aware of those drawbacks but do I recommend buying this engine like I said it depends I'm going to say yes it's definitely a good toolkit to have uh, my absolute favorite thing is how quickly I can make projects with this I have a blast I can tell stories because I'm mainly a storyteller I'm only a uh, I guess you could say a part-time artist. I only like to make uh, very simple objects. I don't like to spend hundreds of hours making artwork. And uh, I'm a very busy person, so I don't like to do all that ex unless it's an Unreal Engine. And so I would say it's perfectly fine to use this if you're a hobbyist or maybe you want to make small little projects that aren't very serious. And maybe you just want to try your hand out at game development. And who knows, you might be able to sell a couple of copies on Steam. But overall, I will recommend the engine, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have its drawbacks. Make sure if you want to do any more research to visit the website, uh, GameGuru Max or the GameCreators.com and do your own research and see what other people think. On that note, I will say uh, good luck uh, to you on any projects that you decide to make on here. And I am uh, hope to play your game one day and uh, that'd be pretty cool to see what you come up with it because this engine, it really does shine so long as you have good idea and you have a good work ethic and you're willing to put in the work to make something fun.